God bless you this morning on this beautiful day that God has given you. Wherever you are, may we gather together around God's word. Let us pray. Lord, what an awakening you offer to us in words upon pages, on tablets. Lord, there are so many ways to read your word. And we recognize, Lord, that you, you bring us together with a variety of experiences. Help us to share those experiences, not to be so shy about our faith or keep it so private that we can't build one another up and inform one another in the truth of faith, that what is laid out for us in these laws and these commands and these ancient stories is real here and now and has meaning in our lives as we live them each and every day. So Lord, take us into that place in our lives where we honor you in all we say and do, that our life may be glorifying to you, a blessing to others, and an illumination of your tremendous love as it's lived out among us. Lord, we pray especially today for cures. Cures for the current disease pandemic of COVID, but of so many diseases that have racked humankind for so long that we struggle with. Lord, bring us to a new day of healing that we may have the strength to go forward in your will and your way and to unseen possibilities as you awaken us to the reality of who we are in Christ. This in his name we pray. Amen. So I bring you to a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. <clears throat> this cosmopolitan church, and so many of them were made up of, of people from all kinds of walks of life and all sorts of regions as they were drawn together in the Roman Empire, those great Roman roads. We come to the church in Ephesus, which was very much a meeting place. And here we hear these words given about where we find truth. But speaking the truth in love, May, may you grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make, maketh increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Truth is going to come from you. Truth, in order for people to hear it, it has got to come from your heart. At some point, what you have taken in, you need to resolve into some statement of your faith. We have things like the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed. Different denominations have different creedal documents, statements of faith. But each person is called to have a personal statement of what their faith is. Part of it is in a lot of people's testimony. As they share with others how they came to be a Christian, but more than just a story. The truth that is in love is something that's to be lived out every day, not a story that can be told and forgotten or changed or set aside, but an evidence in everything we say and all the things we do, even as we seek and accept grace for the mistakes that we make. Love needs to be prominent and recognized in the Christian life, if it's going to be received as authentic, as guiding for others. So I want to encourage you today to take a close look at the way that you are walking with faith. And, and if you're just coming to faith, not to be so critical on yourself of the things that you can't do, that you're struggling with, that you're just learning about, but to look out into the witnesses of faith that surround you and, and really question, is this the best environment to grow in faith? Or is there more I need to know? Is there something I'm not being engaged to share? Because the body needs to work together. And we need to be in places and among fellowships that function effectively, that work towards the common goal, which is following Christ, who is the head, the king and head of the church. So as you look to one another, look to find Christ, that connection to Christ that should be in all parts of the body, for everything is governed by the head. That is Christ, your Savior and Lord, as he lives and breathes in you and in all who, who walk in his name. May you be strengthened.